Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of We Need to Talk. I'm your host, Melinda, joined by my co-host, Carmel. Hello, everyone. We missed you last week, but I was having technical difficulties. As I told Carmel, um, my computer, my laptop was on the fritz, and I'm convinced every two years, Apple, like, pushes a button that makes you have to go into the shop to get it fixed or looked at. Mm -hmm. Basically, Mm -hmm. so... Literally, it was a brand new computer that they had to almost rebuild for me. It was under warranty, so every Apple Care rather. Okay, okay. So everything was free. But had it not been, I would have had to buy a new computer. I swear they do it on purpose. I, I, any of you out there who have new iPhones, you also know this happens. So Apple, we know it's okay. We're we're, we're okay with it. You we're know. hip to your game. But we get it. But we I really it. do think like I'm. And you're the critical thinker in this. Thank duo. you. Thank you. Not the conspiracy theorists, but I'm convinced. This is the one thing that if you were to say, I'd be like, you know what? There's a lot of data, I think, that would lead towards proving that correct. Yes. Yes. I mean, a lot of people understand or know the term plan obsolescence. Um, This is by far strategic obsolescence. You guys know, you know it's coming up. Fortunately, it did happen before your warranty ended. Yes. So I think you got lucky on that. Yes. I have another Uh, year, actually, so that's good. They might still try to get me with something else. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, I'm convinced Apple. I'm I'm watching you. This is why I'm not stuck with Apple. I have a I have one iPhone, and that's actually I have an iPad. But that's it. Like I know people who have everything in their life is is Apple: the but phone, their watch, iPad, I computers. I still think it is kind of a superior product. Superior to what? Like a PC, for example. No. I sorry, I do. I think you can do way more. You can do more because it allows you to. Right, so it's but a no, but see that's product. the difference. No, because with PCs <laughs> you can do whatever you want. See the thing about Apple products, and this is not our topic of the day, but the thing about Apple products is they make getting the thing you want to do really easy to do. Okay. But if you want to do something else, you can't do it. Getting to your files, adjusting your files, editing your files, moving things around, you can't do that. But if you want to do this thing right here, it's super easy and it does it very well. But that's all you get. That's it. You, anyone here, try, anyone in this watching this, listening to this show, tell me, try to move your files from one phone to another phone or from another computer. It's not difficult. It's just moving a file. Exactly. That's but, all I'm going to say. But that's what the beauty of the cloud is. Like, you don't even have but to. But I don't want it in the cloud. I want it in my other device. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You see, you you fell into the trap. They want you to go to the cloud. They okay, do want I, you to go to the cloud. Exactly. And you will do it. And you'll move but to the, the cloud. But the cloud is a I don't want the thing cloud. because it saves space on your hard drive. Like, it's it's just out Mm-mm. there and in- I want it on my device. Oh it's my conditioning because all of you who listen to this right now, when she said the cloud, all of you are thinking up too, aren't you? It's not up in the cloud. It's literally down. It's on another computer that Apple has. Yeah, they have access to everything. Exactly. I want it on my things. We and are going to eventually have the the technology talk on We Need to Talk because it is something we need to talk about. But yes, today, that is yes. not what we were talking about. Today, we're going to have a little bit of positivity mm. because uh, there's a lot of great things happening, specifically in black entertainment. Yes. And it's made me so happy to see. First and foremost, I just want to start um, by talking about Tyler Perry's new studio. I think I cried when I saw the tour. Mm-hmm. I was so emotional seeing it. So he opened up a brand new studio in Atlanta, and it is apparently bigger than... All of the uh, movie studios out here in LA, so I think they said Sony, Paramount, and Fox combined. Yes. And yes. now, it, you know, he's going to, he's, you know, cast, he has two new shows on BET, The Oval and Sisters. I have a very good friend that is a series regular on Sisters, and he is fostering new talent. He's employing so many people of color, mm-hmm. um, and a lot of people are moving their projects to now be working on his studio. And I just think, that's such a, a positive story to see where he came from and now where he is. I saw the meme the other day that it was like, Tyler Perry's lace front got him a $600 million empire. What has your <laughs> lace front done for you? And I was like, you know what? What has wow. my lace front done for me? So that's what I'm working on, trying to see what it's going to do for me. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's the that's the most productive lace front of all time. Wow. <laughs> did you ever see the Medea plays? I never saw one live. Okay, see, so I, I did like... When they first started, one of my friends in college was like, oh, we, we need to go see this play called Medea. Uh, this guy, Tyler Perry, he started this character. It's so funny. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. And we went, and it was hilarious. Really? Yeah. I actually like the plays better than the movies. Okay. that that I could see that. Because I, I saw the first two or three movies, and I was like, eh. It felt very like typical the plays black are way stuff. better. Okay. I can actually say the plays are okay. way better. I've seen a couple of his plays, and I really enjoyed them. But gosh, just look at everything that he's built. From sleeping into your car... 
to now owning the largest studio in America. In America. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, it's incredible. that's... That, and I've... And what's cool about it, like again, I don't have to be a fan of his work, but his work ethic, mm, I'm a hundred percent behind. Hundred percent behind his grind, his hustle, and to now see that he's reaching back and doing exactly why he did it. Like mm-hmm. a lot of times, you know, we have black folks, celebrities who who are our heroes who go out and do great things, and they don't really reach back. They mm-hmm. don't really do the thing they, they said they're going to do. Um, Tyler Perry has been doing that from the from the jump. Like has right. always hired people and brought people on and took him on the journey with him. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now I think he's producing uh, Coming to America too, yep. which is yeah. my favorite yeah. comedy of all time, yeah. and the new Bad Boys movie, mm-hmm. all in the same mm-hmm. lot. And they're all yeah, all filming yeah. on his studio, which, which is, is so crazy. Cool. So I, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, this is great, but like, why is this such a big deal? But like, why is this such a big deal? I think because. We have always wanted to be included. We always wanted to be, hey, give us a shot. Here, listen to this. Let me pitch you this. And the problem is, we, you know, we have to ask people who don't know us. Yeah. And so now we have someone who does know us, and it's not. We're not going in pitching scared. We're almost expecting. Like he wants material. He wants content. So it's like it's totally different. That's it's a game changer in that we now have a place where we can literally send stuff that's going to be made and made our way. Yeah. Um, I and think accurately. Accurately, because <laughs> like if we get another, you know, Kings of Egypt or some other stupid movie that they just twist stuff up and don't give us our, cre- you know, our credibility and our mm-hmm. credence, like it, we don't have to do that now. That's the right. biggest thing. We don't have right. to do that now. Right. We have people who have money, who have the resources and the the uh, the talent to put it all together and in house the entire thing, district from from production to distribution. And I think what people need to understand also is like. It's so funny when you hear people like, well, why, you know, is it just about lift, uplifting black people? And it's like, the fact that you're even asking this question, <laughs> but I'm going to answer it because <laughs> I'm sure people are wanting, it is imp- this is important because black people as a whole have been held back for mm-hmm. a very, very long time. And just plain and simply, they've been held back for a very long time. So to have one of our own get to this point, and obviously, you know, Oprah, Oprah's, you know, done some really great things, but I think... Tyler Perry has even kind of surpassed her in a sense mm-hmm. because he really is in now in a position to fully employ people of color and help them achieve their dreams as well. And then they can then pay it forward. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's what's so beautiful is that we're always, like you said, we're always wanting to be included and wanting to be given a chance. And now we, if people are able to work with Tyler Perry, they'll be able to give other people chances. Yeah, I think it's weird when they <laughs> look at us doing for us and it's weird, but like, if this is an Indian thing, you know, and at a whole Bollywood studio, and no one's going to care about that. They're just would champion it. If mm-hmm. it's, you know, an Asian production studio or whatever, they would just champion it. But if it's a black thing, it's like, oh, why, why you guys just want to do that? And I'm like, well, why not? <laughs> like, I don't know why why we wouldn't want to do it. And it's not like we're not including white folks or, like, we're excluding anybody. But we need to have our but own thing. We have thing. to put ourselves first we at some point. We have to put ourselves first. At some point. Oh, Please. My oh, my gosh. gosh. Um, so what else is going on in the world of beautiful black achievement, Carmel? We got, so not only the Tyler Perry thing, um, but on that same vein, um, Byron Allen, who, mm-hmm. if you guys aren't aware of who Byron Allen is, he's a former comedian and now a billionaire entrepreneur. Amazing. Who um, recently bought the Weather Channel not too long ago, which was the craziest purchase I ever heard. Yeah, I like, remember seeing that. I three, he's seeing like $300 that. million dollar purchase. And it's like, he just, yeah, I bought the Weather Channel. And such a random purchase, too. Like, that's awesome. And you wouldn't think, like, the Weather Channel, but it, it like, okay. it's Yeah, it's All like, right. when you think about it, like, yeah. yeah, like, a black guy buys a Weather Channel. It's like, why would you buy the Weather Channel? I'm like, well, why not? Because, again, if a white person does this, no one thinks twice. At all. Right. At all. So now... What and what other channel or network out there uh, do we look at for our? So yeah, like CNN, you know, BBC, mm-hmm. MSNBC, and all these are kind of provide. This, but there's nothing else other than the Weather Channel. Right. He has the market on the weather. Like, yeah. It's such a brilliant uh, strategic move by him. Was that he always wanted to? Is that like always part of his plan? No. So the story, um, he he's been always he's a very smart guy. Like he's mm-hmm. always gone about buying things that people kind of don't want Mm -hmm. and then repurposing them so he's bought several smaller networks and he's put like comedy tv together like a food network Mm -hmm. um and then so he was i think talking to someone who mentioned that the the weather channel and its previous owners were trying to get rid of it and uh they were trying to unload it and he's like thought about it 
talked to a couple of investors, made a few phone calls, and understood that there was a lot of money to be earned <clears throat> by repurposing it and then rebranding it. Okay. So okay. He saw that he saw the investment, he saw the money, and he made the move. That's incredible. Yeah, he's he's now on the verge of. I think he also just created his own uh, production company and is going sh- direct to theaters, which not many production companies do. Um, he's making a lot of moves behind the scene that people don't know about, and one of the big things coming well, up. I think a lot of people don't know who he is. Yeah, well, you probably know when you see him. Yeah, you know him. He's always yeah, been on his name. late night TV after Letterman and Leno. He's he's picked the most randomest places to show up. What is he uh, mainly known for? I think comedy. Well, specifically the, comedy. So the biggest show I think he had that people will know is called Entertainment Tonight. I think it okay. was basically him sitting on a couch and you'd have like four comedians, mm-hmm. two to each side of him, mm-hmm. and basically he would set up their jokes. So it was a real simple concept, but he basically would interview them and say, "Hey, so I hear you bought a new car," and then the, the comedian would go into their joke, or he would say, "Man, you know, so you got married last week or something like that," and then they would go into their joke. So it's kind of like his thing. It's a, It was kind of corny, but it was kind of <laughs> cool. And that's kind of Byron Allen's thing. He, he kind of comes off kind of as a dorky, kind of corny guy. But when you hear him talk, um, you're like, this dude's brilliant. Like, he's he's hustled from the get-go. Um, he was just on The Breakfast Club. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. I remember telling you about that. Yeah, and so it's like the first time I've seen him on a public forum talking about himself. Because it's always been like entertainment-ish. So it's kind of like you don't know who he, he really is. And he even says that in this interview. Um, but he talks about, like, as a 10-year-old, hustling these, I guess, coupons that used to come out of um, shopping carts back in the day. Kind of like, have you been to Aldi's before? Yeah. So, you know, you put a quarter in there and you put the cart back, they give you the quarter back. Right, right, right. So, I guess old school shopping carts was like that. You, when you brought the cart back, it gave you, like, a coupon or something like that. So, okay. back in the day, he used to hustle and would just wrangle all the shopping carts in a parking lot and get, like, a dollar worth of coupons. And back then, that was a lot of money. Yeah. And so he's like, I did that just so my mom wouldn't have to worry about us eating. Wow. And that he said, that began my hustle. I looked at every opportunity. And it's funny, because it's the same thing he's doing now. He's buying small market networks and then repurposing them. Wow. Um, so in this interview, he talks about how he is now fighting AT&T and Comcast. Okay. Which are the two biggest, you know, uh, huge. media market, uh, media companies out there and what's the goal the goal is and i'll backtrack a little bit he wants to complete the book or the story that he says started by martin luther king he says he talked to coretta scott one day and she said the reason why that martin luther was killed was not for um the i have a dream speech it was not for civil rights it was for economic inclusion. Mm. He talks about how the speech people need to go listen to is called The Other America. He says that's the speech. Um, he says that she says that was the speech that they killed him for mm. because his goal was to bring half a million poor people to D.C. DC in what was called the Poor People's March. And a majority of those people were white. Mm. So Interesting. Yeah, so he says that the first three chapters – that our, our black folks have had to go through was one, end slavery, two, end Jim Crow, uh, three, achieve civil rights, and then the fourth was economic inclusion. So once he had that conversation with her, he said that changed everything for him. Wow. So now his goal is for these companies um, to not only you know hire black folks, create more diversity, but allow black folks to manage money. Because he said that's the biggest thing we don't have a lot of is black folks managing the ten trillion dollars of money that's out there. And this liquidity is moving around, but black folks don't get to touch it. We don't. We're not offered it, and we don't move it. So and that's why we don't know how to deal with finances or anything. Yes, we never get the experience to know how to deal with that type of stuff. And that's something he talks about so much in this interview is that there's he said there's plenty of money out there. There's plenty of resources. There's plenty of capital. He says black folks just aren't on either side of it. Right. So right. we don't know how it moves, and we don't know what to do with it. Um, I mean, there's a reason for that. Obviously, and the, they it, they keep it from exactly, black people. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's his goal in uh, with I guess Comcast and and um, AT and T is one to break their monopolies, but also to provide economic inclusion. Because uh, I can't, I can't remember exactly what he said, but there's they're not allowing for some reason um, one they won't air many, many of his own networks and shows. And they're not allowing them to, like, I guess, reach out, again, like I said, to manage their money. Mm -hmm. So November 13th, I guess, they go before the Supreme Court because he's beat them in the other courts. 
Huh. Scary thing is, though, he says the Supreme Court is not hearing his case or their case. And this AT&T and Comcast are bringing the case to the Supreme Court. So it's mm-hmm. not even him. He says the Supreme Court is actually now looking at a, I guess it's a, um, a civil rights amendment that basically states that, how do you put this? When you're being, I guess, racial or if it's being, you know, some kind of segregation or some kind of like prejudice towards black folks, it has to be 100% proven. So <laughs> this, this, That's frustrating. right. So this, <laughs> this, this amendment states that it has to be 100%. So basically, if they're ruled in their favor, he says it's almost like they can get rid of this amendment. This How, right. Okay, but let's backtrack a little bit. How do you 100% prove? That like somebody's being racist. Exactly, he says, and that's and you get, the video is very good, and he talks, but you can't. It's impossible. So this, the fact that, it literally comes down to my word against yours. Yes, yes, and she. So the fact that they lost in the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, wow, is why they flipped the whole case mm. to make it about this now. Okay. So okay. he's like, I'm not scared, and I, I really like his approach. He's like, I'm not scared. I don't care. I'm, I'm I'm going after it. That's great. Even if we lose. Um, it's not my fault. It's something they wanted to do anyway. Right. But I'm not going to not take this fight um, because I've already won. He's already beat them, so yeah, he's going to keep yeah. fighting. But um, I think what's cool about seeing Tyler Perry and Byron Allen is seeing that we have some individuals out there who have accomplished the things that I kind of thought were impossible in some ways. I looked at some certain things like there's no, there's never a time where we'll have that. We always have to kind of like go with this route or we have to have them want us. Um They've created platforms now where they don't. We can completely yeah, do it ourselves incredible. now. It really is incredible. I think one of my favorite things about the Tyler Perry Studios is that it was built on top of an old plantation. I did not know that. I got chills wow. when I heard that. I was like, way to turn all of that around. I didn't know that. I yeah. thought it was on like an army base or something like oh, that. Oh, no. It's we were part of, part of an old plantation. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That, yeah, that's nuts. It's amazing. That's, and see, that makes it... <laughs> that makes it even better, right? right? It makes it a whole much it's better. It's incredible. Um, so for those of you that don't know, I haven't seen it yet, but Eddie Murphy is making a comeback. Yes. Have you seen the, his new movie on Netflix? Yes. So it's called Dolomite. Mm-hmm. And I've, from what I've seen, people are loving it. I was, I was kind of... The, my, my last memories of Eddie Murphy are like, what's that horrible movie he did? Uh, was it not Bullfinger? That was actually kind of good. Oh my God! Haunted House, Doctor Doolittle. You can keep probably name a few. There was several bad Eddie Murphy movies. Several bad Eddie because Murphy. Because he movies. gave a Family Man, you know, because he got like a whole clan of kids. Right. Yeah. So and <laughs> he, he just like started putting out kids, movies for yeah. no reason. Right. Um, right. Norbert, all that stuff. Just, oh God! Yeah, yeah. that's a terrible movie. So when I heard Eddie's in a new movie on Netflix, I'm like, everyone's just trying to get Netflix money. Yada yada yada. And then I watched it. and I'm like, okay. Okay, first of all, the Dobomite story, I didn't know that Yeah, what's well. the premise of it? I so, don't know anything about so it. So Dobomite, I guess, was like this notorious or famous, infamous pimp back in the 60s and 70s who so kind of had his persona. based on character. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because I remember watching House Party, and I remember um, Dobomite's reference in the movie, and I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I feel like I'm supposed to know. Hmm. And so I was interested to see the movie just to find out more about the, the person. I guess he was this pimp that was kind of funny and had this persona, and... Uh, I guess Rudy Ray Moore actually then took actually took it and made a made a you know it a entertainment thing and actually became famous off of mm-hmm. it. So this is Eddie Murphy taking the Rudy Ray Moore story and making it uh, a real thing. Okay. Um, everyone in the movie is great. The movie's well done. Who uh, else is in it? So no. Mike Epps is in it. Okay. Um, He's a fool. <laughs> t- total fool. Um, Craig Robinson's in it. Um, there's a new actress who plays. Um, I'm not, I don't think she's a real character, but she plays like Eddie's sidekick. Mm-hmm. Super funny. I, I got to remember her name. But all the characters and everyone's like, uh, Wesley Snipes is in it. Really? Wesley's making a comeback. Where Wesley? And he's good in it. So I'm like, okay. I love, so it, yeah, it's, I love Wesley Snipes. Yeah, and he's, and he's more comedic in this than like, you know, action figure uh, than Wesley. But yeah, it's a great movie. Well done. And it's funny. So I'm like, okay, cool. It's good to see him coming back mm-hmm. and actually doing stuff that he's known for. Um, it kind of felt like... Kind of not nutty professorous, but more kind of coming to America. It felt like okay. him being in his in his kind of dorky role, but funny, you know. And it was it was a good a good start for him to make a comeback. So I don't come the in kind of classic Eddie Murphy. It yes, like. yes. Okay, I'll have to check it out. 
Yeah, everyone's getting these Netflix deals now. I, I'm, I'm not. Every, I know everybody is. Some of them, I'm like, eh. So when I again, like I said, when I saw this, when I was kind of iffy on it, but you know, if they're more like this, I'm, I'm with it. So um, Netflix just has so much money. So much money. Did like, you can, see? Can we get a Netflix deal? For real, for real. <laughs> what did I see? What? Um, Bright. No, and I didn't see it because of the feedback I got. And I love me some Will Smith, but people were like, this movie's weird. It was very weird. <laughs> very that came weird. That out last year, right? Or two years ago. Or two, okay, but yeah, I was. people were like, this Ugh. movie's weird. But then some people were like, oh, I want to know more about this world. Like, it should have been a series rather than trying to cram so much I think that, you know what, that actually would have been better. Because they, 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 they rushed a lot. Yeah. Because <laughs> so I didn't know where the movie was going. The alien guy and Will and the whole relationship and it just it took off too fast. Um, it felt almost like a parody after a while. Um, so then from that to the Dolomite movie, okay, that's we can do that. We're okay. I would like to them to, to I would like to see more investment in like good quality original work. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I mean, I don't really know how Netflix works. I mean, I know my husband would know better than I would, but it would be nice to to just see more really good quality original works. Yeah, I mean even Dolomite is not a remake, but it's it's a story we kind of know or yeah. it, so that kind of helped it in some ways. But yeah, I would like to see um from scratch, stuff completely written from scratch. Mm-hmm. Like it I feel like now I'm at the age where um I have to tell people that's not the original and it was weird mm. because a kid today um is from Reseda. I met and when he said that, someone else next to me goes, "Oh, I karate kid." We both start laughing because we're both of that age. Right, right. This kid's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, oh, Karate Kid, he's from Reseda. The kid goes, like, Jaden, he's from Reseda in the movie? I'm like, he's thinking. That that was the, the original new Karate one. Kid. Right. I'm like, no, that's, that's not the original. Yeah. Like, that's, I'm like, and I just realized I'm that age now. I'm that age. <laughs> I got to tell also, this kid. One, they always say history repeats itself. And now we're actually starting to see history repeat mm-hmm. itself with a lot of things. But it's like, why? Can't you come up with any original ideas? I don't get it. Why are all these remakes happening? I mean, I remember my friend posted this um, picture of a, a movie theater like Marquee, and it was like Toy Story, Men in Black, um, and the, like it was like three other movies, and it was like he was like, "What year is this?" Mm. You know, because it was all just remakes, and there's right. nothing original. So it's I'm not surprised that they would think that the Karate Kid with Jaden Smith of all people was the original. Is the one. original? Like, no, you have no idea. Well, and what's funny is. We could have another one. Oh, well, there's another Karate Kid out, actually. Is there? I yeah. Mean, I know there's the, the YouTube series. The YouTube series, series yeah. right. So, I'm like, so that's so the yeah. reason why is because people will watch it because it's a known brand. For sure. So For sure. I get that. That's where they're making their money. People like this brand, they'll watch it again. So now But we're it's not in. a known brand for those t- kids. So that's the thing I don't get. It's like, yeah, this kid did not know it, but they put a person he does know. That gets him in. That's true. Then that's true. I watch because I know that's the true. brand. So they get both of us. Right. Um. The YouTube series, I don't know, I don't know how well it's doing because it's you know Ralph Macchio and the guy who plays Johnny, <laughs> so I don't know if kids know who that is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, like those those movies were originals. Mm-hmm. Like someone had to take a chance on those movies. Right. So right. why not do it again? Yeah. Why not find a a great script, a great story, and give it a shot? Like because they're out there. I they're know they're totally out there. Out There's there. no way they're not. You know. But we'll see. But you know that's what I'm again excited about the Tyler Perry studio because I think he will be giving opportunities to new works, but also to young black writers and young black directors and other people of color that want to try to be in the film industry, which I'm excited to see. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I really want to see now some of our guys like a Michael Cougar and, you know, mm-hmm. Michael B. Jordan yeah. go to a Tyler Perry and then from start to finish, do something new. Do something that's not been Brand done. Brand new, original. Brand new, original. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, we've got talent on every side of this whole production. Yes. Let's see what we can do. Cause Absolutely. Again, even like Black Panther, you know, it's not an original story, but done amazingly well. Completely just an, yeah. a, like a great, probably the mm-hmm. best take on all the uh, comic book um, stories, mm-hmm. but not original. So and proof that all black casts do sell. Yes, yes. Which <laughs> it's so funny that people think it wouldn't. Like y'all love us, y'all y'all gonna come see us. I don't know who's but gonna think that. Uh, so that's interesting that you say that because it doesn't really transcend into movies and film for some reason to me. Like. For example, do you remember the uh, movie, um, uh, what is it, what is it, Best Man Holiday? Mm. You know that? Yes. So you remember the Best Man, it was like Morris Chestnut, Tay yes. Diggs, and mm-hmm. they had the Best Man Holiday mm-hmm. come out. And it got 
a really high rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. But there was an article that came out, and it was like, race-based film, Best Holiday does da 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 And this one writer was like, why is this race-based? Just because it's an all-black cast? It's like, mm. it's about family. Mm-hmm. It's about the holidays. It's about uh, being there for people that need you. Like, there's, she was naming all these themes. It's like, sure. when you see all-black cast, for some reason, or you see all people of color cast, they think that it has something to do with their race. Mm-hmm. And that's not necessary, and it's, be- it's not necessarily true, but... When it's just an all white cast, you just think that that's the default and it's normal. Yeah, that's that's true. Okay, I can see it from that. What's well, funny because I think when that movie came out, mm-hmm. I felt like it was a time around a lot of black, all black cast movies like yeah. The Wood, and just before that it was like Still I Got a Groove Back. You know, there was like a good yeah, like five Brown to Sugar ten and right. the Basketball. It was like that whole yeah. So I yeah. almost feel like. And it's not an excuse. It almost was just put in that same category. Right. So like, okay, it's another black film about stuff black people do. Um, no, it's like, stuff that we all do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, you don't play basketball. You don't listen to music. You don't eat good food. You don't have friends. Like, wh- And if you don't, what's wrong with you? What's like, wrong with you? Right. Now, we do it differently. We do do We differently. definitely do it differently. And I, I will admit, they're all cultural things and things that we say that other people probably won't get. Mm-hmm. You know, when we talk about... Who made the potato salad? Like, like, why is that a big deal? It's like, because it's a big deal. You know what I mean? Right. Talk about the cookout, you know, mm-hmm. all that stuff. There are certain jokes that, you know, I get that black people make that maybe everybody won't get. But as, as a whole, we're, it, it's pretty universal. So then, <laughs> right. So then was Black Panther more successful because people who know the story, read the comic books, predominantly white people are going to go and kind of know what they're getting into? 100%. And okay. that's what I think. Okay. I think because it was already, I mean, one, everybody's going to go see Marvel movies regardless right. of, of what, I mean, it could be in all anything mm-hmm. cast yeah. and people will go because Marvel has its stamp on it. You know, you're going to get a good quality entertaining um, action film, yeah. you know, so I don't think that mattered. Um, but yeah, if you, they are already reading the comics, you have that fan base, but then they had two sides. They had the comic book junkies and they had the black people. Mm-hmm. Like those were literal the right. two sides. Right. And then the people in the middle were like, well, I guess I have to go see it because, you know, all these, other, everybody else is going to go see it. And so then that's why it surpassed every record possible, you know, so it just got everybody on board. It really, I mean, it, it was historical. It really was historical. Do you, do you remember when, um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon came out? Yes, but I didn't see it. Okay. So I saw that and I felt like that was, the feeling I had watching that felt like when I saw Black uh, Black Panther. Really? Yeah, because it was such... Because, I mean, karate movies have been out forever. But for some reason, that movie felt bigger mm. than every other karate movie I've ever okay. been to. Okay. Um, and I remember watching it, and I was like, this was an amazing experience. Like, mm. And I didn't think I'm black watching an Asian film. Right. You know, and it's karate, and it's kung fu, and it's in you know China, whatever. I'm just watching a great film about stuff. Something that, yeah, I don't know much about, but I'm just enjoying the experience. I don't know why that's not the case for us. Right. Like that's when someone can just watch something about black folks and, you know, if it's historical and, you know, set back in ancient times or if it's, you know, even now, like why does it have to be? And part of this is our fault. Part of us, we make things black. <laughs> and I, I kind of, I, I, I'm mad because that's the truth. You we know, do. I, and we I just make things black. so we black do. and I'm cool with it. But to the degree when now like people are like holding it against us, like, well, we kind of made it this way. Like, no one's talking about Chinese Asian films. Like, it's just Crop Tank and Dragon. That's it. You win the song. Crazy Rich Asians. That was probably the first mm, film yeah. that I felt was very specific, specific to Asian culture that like there were a lot of things in there that only Asian people would probably laugh at. Sure. Yeah. But, but everybody, I don't know anybody that didn't like that movie. Yeah. I loved and it. I didn't hear any backlash about right. it. Oh, God. Exactly. Calling ourselves Asians. Exactly. Like, but I, th- I don't know. I think, you know, when people say things are always black and white, I think there's like a, a literalness to that term. Like yeah. things are always black and white, you know, but I think because we're, we're the two races that have always kind of been at ends with each other. Yeah, <laughs> history, that's you know? right. So because I don't if there's a, a Mexican film come out or, or, you know, whatever, people just, OK, it's a Mexican film. It's cool. Like and they, right. they get their thing. Like, it's right. dope. But like if we say something, it's like, oh, y'all trying to be all black. And it's funny because even like when I started Black Brew, and I had uh, the first month of just like, you know, talking to people about it and I was excited. Someone who was of, you know, lighter complexion <laughs> said, can white people drink this? Mm-hmm. And and I was, was really befuddled. I mean, like, like it's coffee. It's coffee. <laughs> Y'all drink it anyway. Right. So I'm like, what? Like, you cannot not go buy it. I'm like, I can't stop you from going to the store or going online. But when she asked me, I was like, 
what is she thinking? Like, like, <laughs> like only black folks are going to walk in the store and buy this, and like, right. it's only at black stores. But then I think we kind of created that atmosphere that when we do something for us, y'all can't have it. But no, we want y'all money too. Right. We want everyone's money to go in there and spend it. If it's movies, if it's you know music, or if it's food, yeah, we want everyone's dollar. But like, we do make our things very black and can be militant about it. It's just that white people don't have to put the stamp of white on something because mm-hmm. everything, like I said, the default is white. Yeah. So when we, the minute somebody else puts a stamp of their race on it, they're like, oh, this must not be for me. It's like, no, we're just saying that this is something that we created. It's not that you can't take part in it. Right. Now, do we really have to say that, though? That yes. Seems, uh, that seems silly. <laughs> that seems so silly. Uh, well, I'm going to move on to a couple of um, <clears throat> missed opportunities in black achievement this mm, week. Um, mm. I, I recently watched uh, American Sun with my husband on Netflix. And if you don't know what American Sun is, it is a it was a Broadway play that was um, nominated for a few Tonys, I think. But it was on Broadway in 2018 with Kerry Washington, Stephen Pascal, and Jeremy Jordan, and um, they just made an adaptation, movie adaptation on Netflix and released it a couple days ago. And the, the premise of the story is basically a interracial couple played by Carrie Washington and Stephen Pascal, and uh, their son doesn't come home, and Carrie Washington goes to the uh, police uh, station to try to figure out where her son is, try to get help to find him. She's really worried, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. The husband apparently had left four months ago. They were, were separated at the time, but it was really uh, a recent um, separation. And um, a lot of things happened trying to figure out where the son is, what happened to him. There's a cop that's racist. And then you eventually find out what happens with the son. He had a traffic stop with the cop and a lot of stuff goes down. Mm. The uh, writer, um, his name is Christopher Demons Brown. He is a white attorney based out of uh, Florida, and him and his wife uh, wrote it together. Um, and I, I was so disappointed <laughs> with it. Um, I, I really wanted to like it. Um, I don't want to give away anything that happens, but I do encourage you to watch it because I would love to have a discussion with you, Carmel, but also mm. listeners on what you guys think of this movie slash play. But I'm really... I commend the writers for wanting to tackle the subject of, you know, police brutality, of of interracial relationships, of uh, racial bias in our country in today's day and age, because it is a modern day film. It's Mm -hmm. not taken, it's not written to be, you know, in the 50s or 60s. It's supposed to be, you know, 2018, 2019. Um, And having people start a conversation about this stuff. But it was, and I was telling Carmel this earlier, it was very apparent that two white people wrote it, that may not have consulted many people of color um, in the dialogue and and the decisions that they made. And I was looking at this, obviously, as a a woman of color, as a black woman, somebody that's in an interracial relationship, and I was side-eyeing it the whole time. (laughs) I was side-eyeing it the whole time. And I was... So wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, His his own wife is not black. So the the couple who wrote this is... Both they're just white. white. They're white. They're white. <laughs> what? Okay. Like, they're white. Uh, and if I'm wrong, fine. But, like, they looked white in the picture. But, like, okay. you know, you never know people's genes. I didn't see their, their Ancestry.com results. But uh, they're white. So. And I don't, yeah, I don't know. I was hoping, okay, well, maybe he has a black wife. Maybe he has a black son. Something. None of the above. Um, so my question is, why would you even want to write this film or write no, this story? I, like, it was just, I mean, I get that that conversation needs to happen. Right. Sure. But why would you want to do this? I mean, look, if people want to use their privilege, quote unquote, to try to bring a, 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 a topic to spotlight that people need to talk about, fine. Sure. That's fine. But like research, get surrounded by other black people and be one. like, what would... <laughs> Just, just one. one. Just one. Which, to be fair, maybe they did, but maybe that's all they did. Maybe mm. they just did one and mm. then decided to just do it their own way. Um, I don't know. It it just I wasn't it didn't really accurately portray what I think the situation would have been. I mean, for those of you who don't know, John and I are expecting our first child, and I just the conversations that they were having as parents, um, I even people that were supposed to have been in love for almost 20 years and then they separated. Okay, that's fine. But still some of the things that were being said, I'm just like, what? 
Oh, so the this is just the overall writing wasn't good. The overall writing was was poor. I'm okay. just gonna be honest. Okay. I think it, I don't think it was good, and I think that the actors did as much as they could with what they were given. I think Carrie Washington did too much with what she was given. <laughs> I love Carrie. I really do love Carrie, but that woman starts at a 12 and has nowhere yeah. to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she stayed at one dynamic the whole time. I mean, there were several other actors I thought that I thought could have probably done a little bit better and made the, um, you know, there's people like Viola Davis that can make the script sound better than it mm-hmm. is. Sure. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. There's, a, you know, and even non-black actors like Meryl Streep, for example, like her and Viola, to me, are like the goats mm-hmm. of acting. Mm-hmm. They can make anything yes. sound good. Yeah. Um, I think just Carrie did what she thought was supposed to happen, and that's fine. Like, I, I do like Carrie Washington, but I, I do <laughs> encourage people to watch it because I really want to know what other people's thoughts are. Because I don't think it's as monumental as people think it's supposed to be. <laughs> so, yeah, because that's my thought. Because yeah. I kept seeing, like, you know, blurbs on uh, Facebook and Twitter and, like, American Sun, American Sun. So, I was like, oh, I need to watch this because I felt like it was something important to watch. Um, the title got me. so It's okay. it is important. Yeah. It's just not done well. <laughs> <laughs> Which we can't do that. We can't talk <laughs> important things poorly. Mm-hmm. Like, we can't have, we can't do it bad. Like, um, if like when they see us came out and it was done horribly with that story, that would that would have been astro- an astronomical fail. But that was a black director and a black writer. She so she told the story correctly because she knew. To that point, <laughs> you brought up Tub- Harriet Tubman before we got on. Yes. So Harriet Tubman movement is coming out with starring Cynthia Erivo. If you don't know who Cynthia Erivo is, she was Celia on Broadway and won the Tony for Best Actress. And then she was in um, Bad Times at the El Royale. So she's a British actress. She's uh, Nigerian and British. And she uh, is playing Harriet Tubman. And look, for those of you that, some of you may know this or may not know this, but Harriet Tubman is my girl. Like, I did reports (laughs) on Harriet Tubman, like, probably most of my life. From, like, second grade up to my senior year of high school. There's nobody that doesn't know as much about Harry Tubman as I do. So when I heard about this movie, I was so excited. I was fine with Cynthia. I like Cynthia. Some people had issues that they didn't cast a black American actress. I get it, but Cynthia's fine. She's dark. It's great. Mm-hmm. If she was light-skinned, I was going to fight. <laughs> it, with the whole like, Zoe Saldana right, playing Zoe Saldana. Like, we're not doing that again. Right. And we didn't, so good. But apparently, there's a lot of historical inaccuracies in this film, and I'm worried. So, you know, Hollywood, bless your hearts. I love Hollywood, obviously. I've worked in the entertainment industry for a long time. But they have this tendency to <laughs> need to always make white people feel good <laughs> at the end of movies. And apparently yeah. this movie um, has a, a fake character of a black bounty hunter Excuse me. that is searching for Harriet. And at the end, when he tries to kill her... The black bounty hunter is killed by her former slave master, who Harriet then, of course, ends up forgiving and absolving of his sins, quote unquote, because he saves her life, even though he was actually the reason why the bounty hunter was looking for her. So at the end of the movie, everybody's all happy wow. and rides off into the sunset, and the, the there is a white savior in the movie, which... This is a slave film, and I'm sorry, white people, but you don't get to be the saviors in this, unless At you're all. a Quaker. And that's oh, yeah. not okay. this situation. Yeah. Yeah, Unless yeah. you're a Quaker. Right. Like, we're good with the Quakers. You guys tried to help. Thank you. Mm. But that's not what the situation was. And I just, I mean, I get why they do it. But, like, why do we have to keep doing this? Like, why are you trying to make people feel good about a part of history that's not meant to make anybody feel good? We don't get to feel good about no. it. So why no. do you get to feel good about it? Yeah, and then you don't you don't necessarily have to feel bad. I get that. Like, I don't have to like, you know, hold you accountable for stuff people did <laughs> two, 300 years ago, but right. you don't get to feel good. No, right. you don't get to have, get the warm fuzzies and save us for some reason. First, we, you, you didn't, you saved ourselves. And two is like, when we get to tell the story, why is it not a hundred? Like, wh- it's not like a fake story. It's not like Lord of the Rings or it's not like Superman right. where we're adding characters, whatever. This is a real person. And there's enough information out there to have made it a 100% historically accurate film. And there's not another Harry Tubman movie I can think of at all. So I this is your one chance, and this is what we get. I'm at least go. like a, a wide release film. I'm sure that somebody made some indie one that nobody ever. Sure, saw. right, 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 but right. Yeah, a wide release film like this that's going to be out in, in, in theaters all across the country. No, there isn't. 
So I'm still gonna see it. I'm not gonna lie because I, I yeah again, yeah I, I mean we kind of have to. We have to. You gotta support the black people that are getting employed, and I, I'm <sighs> I, I'm hoping that it's not as bad as what I've read. But based on the reviews, they've been pretty consistent on what the the premises and what's happened, and it is a little disappointing. But I, I love Cynthia, and even though people you know have issues with her being Harriet and some other issues, like I I'm still gonna go see it and see. But see, see here's up. the thing: you can't be okay with her being Seely. And then I'd be okay with her being Harriet. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, can she play the role? Fine. You know, if, if like, Idris Elba was going to play, uh, I don't know, Booker T. Washington. No one have a problem with you. Not, not one, you know, one you iota. Well, no one have no problem exactly. with you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. She's fine. I just, I just think, I hope, honestly, this gets us away from slave movies altogether. This needs to be the last like, the one. The last like, one. We've We're done good. so many other things. Yes. Besides be slave. Oh, my God. But, like, let's get out of slavery. Let's move to the Jim Crow era. No, mm. let's not. Let's mm. not. Oh, we wow. Focus on the... You know what I actually would love to know more about that I feel like nobody ever talks about? I want to know more about what Sojourner Truth did as an abolitionist. Yes. I feel like nobody I would agree talks with that. about her. I would agree with that. One of the greatest names of all time. Absolutely. And yeah, like, I don't know much about her story. At all. Like what, honestly, what is her main thing that she's known for? Being an abolitionist. Okay, yeah. So, But I, that's like such a vague statement. I mean, because like Frederick Douglass also f- kind of falls under that. Yeah. And we know he wrote books we and know, he, yeah, I don't did great know. speeches, yeah. but like other than that, we don't know his story. Yeah. Um, and I guess if anyone's going to play him, it has to be Morgan Freeman. So we need to hurt him do that movie because now. he looks exactly, exactly like, like Yeah, him. before right. he dies. <laughs> right. We can't on that. Um, um, but but yeah, like, there's so... I don't know. I mean, not only, you know, stuff that just in America, but like we have done things all across this globe. Um, whether it's, you know, I've never really seen a great um, Bob Marley movie. Mm. I, I mean, has there ever been done one? No. So I, where is that movie at? Um, Interesting. There's Haley Selassie who, you know, kind of... The, founded the Rastafarianism uh, movement, never heard, heard a movie about him. And he's, you know, an emperor of Ethiopia, you know, even and all the great kings of Ethiopia and Kush and not just, you know, Egypt, but like, you know, Manza Musa, who I talk to people about all the time, yeah. who is the richest person that ever lived. No one knows who that guy is. Mm. And I think BBC um, just did a small documentary about him and people left and right, like, who's this guy? Who's this guy? Hmm. I'm like, People think Solomon when they first think of you know, the richest person ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and whether he was a real person or not, whatever. But Manza Musa, actually, there's actually evidence of him. And like his wealth was so great that whenever he showed up in a town, he ruined their economy. Really? Because he would just give away gold like it was nothing. <sighs> Interesting. Um, so, yeah. So that story, never been done. You know, um, there's been talk about a movie uh, of Hannibal being done. I think... That was in the works a while ago. It mm-hmm. kind of fell off. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of great stories about you know black people other than just slavery. Positive black people. Positive yeah. stories. Um, but we just, I don't know, do we revert to slavery movies? Because again, that brings white folks in. Because they were the biggest part of that. That's kind of all about them. Uh, and then again, we always make it some way where we can make them feel better about it. <laughs> but no, we can do movies that have nothing to do with them at all. And yes. that was all about us and our achievements and being okay with it. Well, I'm really excited for the uh, Issa Rae and Lakeith Stanfield uh, rom-com. It's the first black lead rom-com that's ever happened. And it's coming hmm. on Valentine's Day called The Photograph. So that's a step up. Oh. I don't know if you've seen that. I have not heard it's a thing a, about it. It's a very, very, very cute trailer. And it's a typical rom-com. But it's black leads. And I'm like, praise the Lord. So I can't. And it doesn't look. Because, you know, like, look, I love my people. But, like, when you do things like two can play that game. Mm-hmm. Or, like, you know, why the fool falls in love. All those kinds of movies. You're just like, mm-hmm. can we have something yeah. that's, like, not so, so corny? So this, to me, is, like what you typically see like a typical like how to lose a guy in 10 days or like Miss Congeniality like those type of rom-coms that everybody goes to see okay but it for once has two black leads nice so okay I'm excited, I'm for, excited that. for that yeah yes, yes. um I'm, I'm drawing a blank now I saw a movie uh, I'm gonna say last year and if it, it wasn't a rom-com and it felt it was a, two romantic black leads in the it was, two romantic, it was two leads in this movie and it was a romantic um element to it oh my god I'm, it was a very weird movie done very well actors we now know as popular we've seen them before now mm. i can't remember this movie's name oh my god um 
You have to let me know. Oh my so. god, I just oh, drove but I, I do want to correct myself. I shouldn't say this. This is the first rom com because everyone gets mad. Queen Latifah and Common did, or LL Cool J did do the last holiday. Or oh, whatever. okay. But nobody saw that movie. <laughs> I didn't see that. I love Queen Latifah, but nobody saw that movie. <laughs> no. mm. But I, I'm excited about all of these new things that are happening within black entertainment. Yes. And it's a positive thing. And whether you are black or not, you should care about this because it, it is it's good. It's it's just new content. It's employing people, and it's going to give you a new perspective on life to be surrounded and see other cultures on your mm-hmm. screen. Mm-hmm. Um, so let us know what you think. Make sure you guys watch American Sun. If you go see the Harriet Tubman movie, we want to know what your thoughts are because we will have thoughts. Oh show. Yes. And uh, we will talk to y'all next week. Bye bye. Bye.